All right, you guys, we're looking at the menu right now. Hawashi, you can get a Kamea. I'm excited, man. I've never had Egyptian food before, so let's do it. Ah! Wow, that's a stocky boy. What's going on, guys? We've got a very special makeover today sponsored by Fashion Nova Men's. I've got five principles to live by if you're a stocky guy, and we're going on a Middle Eastern street food crawl through the city. Do you agree, disagree with my advice, have anything to add? Make sure you hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below. Let's go. What's going on, everybody? Me and Andrew are full brothers, Yep. but sometimes people don't think that we're brothers because we have different body types. Yeah, they say our eyes look alike, but when they look at the body shape, they're like, wow, David's stocky and Andrew's more slimmer and lean. So they cannot clearly be related. Right, between ecto, mezzo, endo, I'm probably like a mezzo, endo, and you're like an ecto, mezzo. Anyway, today, guys, we have five incredibly useful tips for stocky guys when it comes to fashion, and this video is sponsored today by Fashion Nova Men's. And I think this video is very important because, David, there's a lot of fashion channels out there, there's a lot of style, guides but not that many of them provide information for stocky builds most of the information is really relevant to slimmer builds and that's most of the models out there too i want to know what's going to look good on a cow lowry mm. a carson edwards I a byu jimmer fredette jamir nelson nate robinson pj tucker what about the stocky guys i'm 5'8, 185 guys Woo! i'm right here come on i'm a micro bully that's what i am i'm a micro bully ah! wow but today I've got five frameworks for stocky guys. Let's get into it. Number one, redirect from the chunk plus use optical illusions. Number two, keep it simple, but do accessorize. Number three, avoid the big L's. Number four, stay comfortable. And number five, augment sizing. And I have not seen these frameworks. I am dead serious. I did not take these from any other channels. I came up with these myself. Brand new frameworks that are gonna help stocky guys dress better. I am wearing on all Fashion Nova men's too. In fact, I am also wearing Fashion Nova men's. So for example, right now, Andrew, I have a tapered white tee, okay? So basically the tapering is allowing me to get the V shape that doesn't actually exist. Right. So basically, you know, you have broad shoulders, it tapers down at the bottom. That's like creating an optical illusion. So that goes back to redirect from the chunk. So what I'm gonna do is throw on something over this. Okay. And I have these Fashion Nova men's camo joggers on. This is part of staying comfortable and also redirecting attention away from the chunk. You want people's eyes to immediately go up or go down, but basically skip the midsection. This actually kicks into another framework that I know Richie Lee taught me is that uh, you gotta augment the sizing. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna pull out this shirt a little bit right here at this specific point, boom. Draping over the stomach good now, right? You just don't, if you're a big guy and you got a little chunk, the last thing you want is some tight t-shirt wrapping around your stomach like this. Andrew, I love this outfit for bigger guys right here. I could wear this with black pants. I could wear this just straight up because Andrew, this is a denim shirt jacket. It's a hybrid. Ah, uh, why do you like the denim shirt jacket versus just the denim jacket? All right. So for bigger guys, when you wear a thick denim jacket that's made of out of that like ultra thick jean jacket material, it's oftentimes too thick. You know, the key is to have accessories, but make sure the accessories are simple. So for example, I'm gonna pop in some earrings right now. Hey. And so notice I said accessorize, but keep it simple. I did not go with the dangly cross earrings. Uh -huh. I just kept it simple, you know, CZ stud. So this is also redirecting from the chunk too. So I think the big thing that's key for um, big guys, Andrew, is like you wanna do something, but you don't wanna do too much. Andrew, somehow I just turned into like an all-star creative immediately. Dude, it's a good outfit, man, the classic. Oh. Camo and denim combo has not failed. I think it's a timeless combo at this point. And I've that just it. has to be done right. Yeah, it just has to be done right and the fit has to be there. Mm. And let me tell you this, Fashion Nova Men's is giving you that fashion designer fit for like maybe one fifth of the price. Andrew, this is outfit two from Fashion Nova Men's. I think I look good. Yo, I like it. This is for stocky guys. I'm applying a lot of the frameworks, Andrew. Uh, for example, slimming jacket with a tapered bottom. You know, even this hoodie's kind of tapered with this white stripe at the bottom, yep. kind of just giving it that V-line. Obviously, we're not, you know, V-lining our body. It's just an optical illusion. Um, the contrasting colors between the dark and the light right here on the gray hoodie. We're also keeping it simple with some stretch denim, Andrew. This is a 36. It goes back to augment sizing. They're stretch denim exactly. that are skinny fit. This Fashion Nova men's denim is super light, Andrew, and super stretchy and super breathable. 
You know what this outfit makes me feel like, Andrew? The first one made me feel like I was a creative of a complex. This makes me feel like I run like a cool hipster boutique pizza shop in the LES. And outfit number three, this is our last and final outfit from Fashion Nova Men's. Yo, this, this is just so like Asian Hooper. Yeah. This is what it is. Well, first of all, we gotta give a shout out because they have some really nice vintage prints at Fashion Nova Men's. Um, I'm I'm really impressed. This is not easy to do this many panels on the yeah, screen print. And this is an official NBA collaboration between Fashion Nova and the NBA. Um, so this is actually another tip for stocky guys, Andrew, is to just keep it black. Black, you could do different shades of black. You could keep it the same black. You know, there's different textures, patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, I've got black, I got the black tee in a large. I've got these in a black 36, they're slim fit. I just felt like this makeover today was so dope by Fashion Over Men's because each outfit did represent a different part of my personality and maybe even a different era of my life. Yeah, I mean, your first outfit was like the trendy designer. Two, you kind of had your just kind of cool boss. And then three, you got your Asian Hooper outfit. All right, David, you shared a bunch of tips and frameworks and just philosophies when it came to dressing for stocky guys. Um, that, I thought that was really important and really helpful because to be honest, there's not that much literature out there for stocky guy. All right, my framework number four that I didn't get to address in the three outfits is avoid the big L's. Basically, you wanna avoid two things. You wanna avoid being the stocky guy that dresses essentially like a NFL like security guard. Right. And then you wanna avoid looking like the big guy who dresses like a skinny guy. Mm -hmm. All right, so that wraps it up for the frameworks that are gonna help stocky guys dress better. David, we have gotta do some stocky guy things and uh, we gotta go get a bunch of Middle Eastern food. So which outfit are you wearing? All right, Andrew, if I was gonna wear outfit number three, I think I would go get pho. If I was gonna okay. wear outfit number two, I think I would have to get a steak. Mm. But since I'm gonna go with outfit number one, a little bit more hipster, a little bit more global, creative, Andrew, we gotta go ch check out some of the best Middle Eastern hand foods in the LES. Let's, Let's go. go. The first spot on our Middle Eastern street food crawl, Andrew, is Zuba. This Ooh. is Egyptian street food. I've never had it before in my life. They've got things called like Tamea, Hawawashi, I never had this stuff. I'm sorry I'm mispronouncing it. It definitely looks like they got a trendy decor. Like the whole painting and the colors that they use look very up to date, very 2020. Egyptian, Egyptian street, street food. Andrew, Zuba is a chain hailing from Cairo, Egypt. Ooh. And this is the very first one in North America, New York City, Andrew. I'll tell you this, Andrew, it felt very authentically Egyptian in there. Bro, it was cool though. You know, they were playing like Egyptian R&B and like, it did have that modern vibe. So they have seven locations in Egypt, and then this is their first location in America. So this is authentic Egyptian street food. Oh, just that's, to show what's in it. Dude, man. actually, I think the best pita and gyro I ever had was actually a Hawaii. Whoa, bro. Whoa. Bro. Whoa. Bro. What is that? Cheese Hawashi. Wow. That is so juicy. I can taste the tomato. It's almost like a, a beef patty and a pita. I straight up give that a four out of five. All right, guys, here we have the spicy tamea. Um, tamea actually refers to essentially falafel. Yo, I don't think I've ever had, you said you had a beef washing before? I think that one uh, euro that I get from Uber Eats sometimes. Oh, yeah. That I like is, I, I, I don't know. I don't know, I'm just saying. Mm. By the way, guys, we are decked out in Fashion Nova Men's right now. Whoa, oh, that's good. Mm. Andrew, no lie? This might be the best falafel I've ever had. Andrew, we have some Egyptian zuka fries right now. These are typical fries, but they got 10 different spices on them. They give you four different sauces. Uh, these are two different types of tahini. These are the spicy sauce. This is their national dish, the koshari. Well, here you clearly have some fried onions. You have some sauce. Yo, this is my first time in my life eating this dish. Egyptian, Egyptian koshari. koshari. That's good, bro. But Andrew, what were your final thoughts on Zuba? It's very clean tasting, and it's not too spicy. Um, overall, it's really good, actually. Very refreshing. But the food is delicious. Honestly, the koshari, there was something that was so, like, ancient. I mean, I can see why it's the national dish. This is like a hot rice bowl, man. It's, it's good. Mm. Come to Zuba. All right, you guys. How do, we are at Sikkofte. I'm sorry if I messed up the pronunciation. How do you say it? Right there. Sikkofte. Sikkofte. Yes. This, we would give you 10 or 20 of these patties like this. Okay. Right? And typically that would be raw meat. Hold up, hold up. Back in the day. Included raw meat, not fully. Okay. Not fully. Raw Just meat would be mixed yeah. in with that. Yeah. But this has been served like this and prepared like this for a long time too. And then we would give you a quarter of a lettuce, of a whole lettuce. 
Oh shoot. Some oh, lemon. Nice, oh, okay. And a little bit of pomegranate sauce, so you can make these little pockets yourself. Okay. And then you just eat it like that with the lettuce and all. All right, you guys, we are looking at chi kofta from Turkey. Uh, the old school ways, there would be a little bit of raw meat mixed in there, but they did away with that, so let's check it out. Mm, that's good, a lot of flavor. All right, you guys, I'm sitting in front of the plate here at chi kofta. This is, like we said, vegan kofta spot. I got the plate, and they give you a lot of different wraps here, the quarter lettuce. This actually reminds me a lot of like Lao food or something, chi kofta. <laughs> Imagine like your veggie hummus dip, but just way better. Just way more flavor, less beany, more herby. It does actually taste like meat. I would say that it, it, it does, it does. All right, guys, this is my first chi kofte. Lots of flavor. Man, with, and it's a whole experience to use your hands and dress it up, man. That was, that was dope. Thank you, man. Wow. I have secured the bag from Minosha. Andrew, this is a Lebanese breakfast treat. I've got one sweet, two savory. This was the most expensive one they had at Minosha, so. Oh, I'm fine. Really? I'm fine. Oh, this is halawa. This is the sweet one. Yo, this one's really good. All right, between the two, which one you like better? Honestly? I'm gonna say the halawa. Wow. Sweet sesame paste one. This one was super good. You guys, this is a cocktail. Jibne Zatar. Oh, oh. Wow. Imagine that dish they kind of give you as an appetizer at some like Lebanese or like um, Italian spots even, but then make it like 10 times better. Mm. It kind of tastes like, almost like a white slice at a pizza shop almost. There's no tomato sauce at all, but there's just cheese, olive oil, and really nice fluffy bread. Next up, I got the halawa. Oh my God. That's good, right? Is that not the best one? That was fire. This is incredible as a dessert. Garlic chicken, classic flavor. Mmm, very spicy. I like it. Let's go, garlic chicken. This is actually like the Lebanese Middle East whipped cream. Very famous. Yo, dip the halawa in it. Hold on, huh? I'm gonna taste it on its own first. Ashta. Yeah. Very good. Very interesting. It's like a creamy, yogurty cottage cheese mix. It's halawa in the ashtar. Wow! Wow! Good. We're on McDougal Street in front of Berlin Donor. These are Turkish donor kebabs. Is they, they said this is actually a version of the German style. So they use a German Turkish style, sort of like Chinese American food. And they said that if they had to say, it's probably more similar to the German style, but maybe a notch more authentic than that. This is the chicken one. This is about uh, $8.95. This is pretty decent, but to be honest, and I'll let you try it in a second. It didn't taste too crazy. All right, next up we have the beef and lamb, $10.75. It's the most expensive donor on the menu. Like I said, this is the Berlin style, so it is more Anglo-sized more fit for the European, Western European palate. Let's try it out. It is a little bit more like ranch type vibe. You still get the Turkish energy, but it's not the same as like, you know, full force, 10 out of 10 authenticity. It kind of tastes like a good version of one of those wraps you get at the bodega. But maybe if like a Turkish guy is working at the bodega and he makes you one of these, it might kind of taste like that. All right, beef and lamb. This is the one. Got that fatty lamb taste, plenty of vegetables to cool it down. Drop for one. Yo, you guys, thank you so much for watching that video. And if you liked it at all, give it a huge thumbs up. Turn on your notifications. Leave a comment down below. You guys, again, shout out to Fashion Nova Men's for sponsoring this. And until next time, it's David from the Fun Rose. I'm out. Peace.